Welcome to Blissfully Ambitious, a podcast for women who are ready to drop the struggle, align with their soul, and reach their divine potential. I'm your host, Ashlina. I'm a spiritual lifestyle blogger, feminine energy expert, and mentor. I also design jewelry, crystal high vibe jewelry, and I'm a new mom doing my best to balance it all and follow my bliss. Hey there, beautiful goddess. I am so happy that you're here. Welcome back to another episode of the Blissfully Ambitious podcast. And we are still in the middle of our self-love series. This is number four out of five. So we only have two left from this series. And what's really cool about it is we are coming up on eclipse season. So what's interesting is you guys know I love astrology, obviously. And this coming Saturday is a new moon in Taurus. And I was going back through everything in the Manifest Bliss membership. So you guys know that I have a monthly membership and it's sort of like a club. And we have videos and calls and trainings and workshops and all kinds of things. And one of the things that we do inside of the membership is we create what we call a bliss book. And it's like this book where every new moon and full moon we write intentions or we write down what we're releasing. And it's part of our rituals. And I was going through my bliss book and looking back at one year ago. So I invite you guys to do the same thing. This new moon in Taurus was in May of 2021. So it was also last year. This year it is on the 30th of April. But I want you to look back and see what was going on in your life last year at the end of April, kind of beginning of May of 2021. Because you can probably look back and see that time, how far you've come, what growth has happened since the beginning of eclipse season and last year. And I know for me, I had some big eclipsing out last summer some big things in my life that changed. And so what happens during eclipse season is things get what they call eclipsed right out of your life. So sometimes you get a relationships break up or start, or you may find that a job gets eclipsed out of your life or a friendship or a certain aspect of your business, or maybe you move out of a home. Like something happens usually Now, the signs that are affected, I think, the most in this are going to be like the Taurus-Scorpio placements, just because we are in a Taurus-Scorpio sort of year. It's the North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio. It's just going to be kind of a crazy time. So I want you guys to really pay attention. And this is actually going to lead us into today's episode because we are going to talk about becoming sort of a boundary boss and becoming an editor in your life, becoming like a magazine editor of your life. This is an aspect of self-love and I want you guys to start doing this during this eclipse season because as things get pushed out of your life or start leaving your life, we can find ourselves either trying to hold on to things or getting depressed about the things that are changing in our lives Maybe we're really holding on to resistance. You know, there's just a lot of growth potential because things tend to get rocky. Things tend to get shaky. This Thursday, I am hosting a workshop inside of the House of Bliss. So this is for members of the membership. You guys can totally join. It's $55 a month, so you can pay the $55, get in, take the workshop, and have access to whatever else you want for the month. I have so much content in there. There's no commitment or contract, so you don't have to stay past your month, but you will get access to this month's New Moon in Taurus workshop, which is going to be a really deep training, and our trainings usually go about an hour and a half long, um, and they're calls with all the other members, so you'll get to meet your community of women inside, and we talk about all kinds of things, and a lot of the girls get some free coaching by me because I will work with you guys through the things, so I fully invite you to join us, but this new moon in Taurus is going to be the launch of eclipse season for the summer, so as 
we begin to experience changes in our lives and they're going to come from your higher self. These aren't going to be changes that you necessarily may be expecting or that you've even thought of, but big changes sometimes that take you by surprise. So I just want to get you guys prepared. I want you guys to be grounded and I want you guys to be in control of the things that are controllable, the things that you can focus on without losing your inner peace. So it's a really big part of it is staying grounded, is staying you know, with a community and having people around you to support you during the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows of your life. So get ready for this exciting new moon in Taurus. Again, our call is on Thursday at 4 p.m. CST. Okay, now let's get into today's episode. So self-love. I love what we have been talking about in self-love during this series because we have been really taking ourselves down like a shift, a shifting into self-love. We started off by talking about not being your past, right? You are not your past. You are only the present. You are only right now. Like nothing from your past is actually real. It is only stored in your body as memories, right? We don't actually have to live that and recreate our past. We can let it go. So number one. And then the second episode, we talk about being a multifaceted woman, being a multifaceted human being, really. But allowing yourself to realize that you are not just one thing you are not just flat you are not one dimensional there's so much to you there's good sides there's bad sides there's upsides there's downsides there's all kinds of things and when you can really sort of like let go of the past just embrace who you are now and fully accept yourself you are on this path this like self-love path right and then in the third episode we talked about getting yourself ahead of and out of the setbacks, right? Because life is full of ups and downs. Life always has these shifts, these letting go, these changes, these, you know, setbacks, hurdles, dark nights of the soul, you know, all of these things. And we have to learn how to shift ourselves out of those. Many times I find that we become victims and we're looking for something or someone outside of us to shift us out of our depression or out of our overwhelm or out of our setback or disappointments. But we have to learn to shift ourselves and not need validation or you know, anything from anyone really. We have to give it to ourselves. We have to become our own best friend. This is part of deepening and nurturing our self-love. And then this Part four, I want to talk about ruthlessly editing your life, ruthlessly creating, like unapologetically creating the person that you want to be, the you that you see yourself as, the you that you want to go towards. When you imagine, it's like that quote that say, imagine the highest, grandest version of yourself and then start showing up as her. That's this episode. That's what I want to talk about today. It's really cultivating the vision of the woman that you want to be. And then to become her is making the steps, making the changes, all of the habits, rituals, and daily things that we do, the things that we allow into our lives are creating our life. So we have to begin to edit it. And I will talk about myself in some of the ways. And one of the ways I know... I've shared with you guys recently is I've done like a clean, a, a alcohol detox, a cleanse. And I kind of gave myself, I wanted to start with 30 days. And then I was like, let's go, let's see if we can do a hundred days. So actually today I'm on day 50, which is halfway into the hundred days. Now I'm not saying there's anything bad about drinking. And in order to love yourself, you have to cut out alcohol. That's not what I'm saying at all. But when I looked at my life and as I look at my life all the time and I sort of reflect and look back and just sort of try to cultivate the best, highest version of myself, you have to start looking at your life like, would I allow this in my magazine? So you imagine if your life was like a magazine and you are the editor, you are the editor in chief and you start looking at all of the pages and the stories and the advertisements and 
the features, you know, of the magazine, right? And you start seeing all that you allow in the magazine and imagine things in your magazine that aren't the highest vibe or that aren't the vision of the magazine that you want to be. And for me, alcohol was starting to become one of those things. For me, it definitely comes with like the hangover. I can remember there was like one night where I was, I think I might've had two glasses of wine and I woke up the next morning feeling horrible. Like I just felt like I didn't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to be lazy. I had a hangover and I'm like, I only had two glasses of wine, but I mean, Sometimes a little extra glass gets poured at the restaurant or whatever, but you really don't think you're drinking that much, but you don't really like, you can't tell what you're going to feel like the next day. And I was noticing that next Saturday and Sunday morning, I wanted to go to yoga. I wanted to do my, you know, four mile walk. I wanted to organize my closet. I wanted to do all of these things and I had no energy and no time and no desire to do any of the things that I wanted to get done for myself. I just kind of laid in bed, watched TV, and I was just like, felt like crap. That is not the vision of myself that I wanted for myself. And I had to kind of like get real with myself that day and go, is this like part of my magazine that I want? Is this what I want my life experience to look like? If somebody were to look at my life like a magazine, is that what what I would want them to see? And so for me, it just became something that I had to decide really quick. And let me tell you, I have been someone that's like after a night of drinking or whatever, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm never drinking again. But this particular morning, it almost felt like a, like a download from spirit that was like, that needs to no longer be a part of your life. Because if I want to create a beautiful life for myself with beautiful memories and get up early in the mornings and have energy and do all of the things that I want in my life, that was kind of holding me back. It wasn't what I wanted. And so it was just something that I decided I am ruthlessly and unapologetically cutting it out of my life. And I'm doing like a hundred day detox, but who knows? I may go longer or shorter. Like I really don't have a specific plan. But I just knew at that moment for the foreseeable future, that was something I was cutting out, right? And I have to tell you, my skin is better than ever. Hair is better than ever. Body feels better than ever. My house is always clean. Like I've got just, I can see the difference in the outside of my life, like the creative drive, the energy, the fuel, the things that I've accomplished and done. I've done so much since I've stopped that. It's like, whoa, how much more can I possibly do with this thing no longer in my life? So let's take other things, for example, to help you look at your life like a magazine editor. And if you love yourself, right, your self-love, that means that you are taking control of your life, that you are going to decide for yourself, I am only available for the best the highest, the most valuable, right? The most beautiful, the most blissful. Like I am only available for the best. I love myself enough to say no to things that don't serve me. And so this is part of that leveling up in this self-love series. It's starting to say, absolutely not. Here's where I draw my boundaries. Here's where I say no more. Here's where I get ruthless. So the question that you can ask yourself literally every day Would I put that in my magazine? If I was a Vogue magazine issue, would that thing, that person, that event, that whatever be in my magazine? Now for me, it gave me space to start saying, what am I going to fill like my life up with? What am I going to fill my magazine up with? Well, maybe instead of happy hours, I'm going to yoga classes. It's also interesting when you look around your home, like I've watched on the home edit on Netflix, right? And you, you watch these girls sort of like edit out everything and then they organize it and the home is just absolutely transformed. So imagine if that was your life. Let's say it's like your closet, right? And you go into your closet and you're like, okay, this dress does not look good on me anymore. I'm getting it out of my life. That would not look good on me in the magazine of my life. Have you ever put on an outfit because I've done this before, and you just like throw something on. It could be like a ratty t-shirt or kind of baggy sweatpants, throw your hair up in a bun. You just kind of want to go somewhere real quick so you don't really 
care about what you look like. You just want to like throw it on, get out the door and like go to doing the thing. You, in that moment, like you're not bringing your best self to the table. You are not bringing the highest version of yourself, the most highly energetic version of yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you have to look perfect everywhere, but if that ratty t-shirt, if that ratty underwear, if that ratty bra were not in your closet, you would not put it on, right? If you cultivated a closet, you know, a shoe wardrobe, like have four really beautiful, well-made pairs of shoes instead of like 13 pairs of like shitty shoes that you don't feel that great in, right? You're going to show up different life. Your life experience is going to be different. If you don't have that ratty t-shirt or those ratty pants or that, you know, all that just kind of like crap in your closet, you're never going to just throw it on. You're always going to throw on something that makes you feel good. Maybe something that's well-made, something that's cute. So editing your life of those choices that are kind of low vibe and just allowing yourself to take the easy way out, you are editing your life. You are becoming a boundary boss or a boundary queen or whatever you want to say. And in that moment, you up level, like in that very moment, in the moment that you decide, oh, maybe grab the healthier food option versus the low vibe food option or the unhealthy food option in that moment where you make that higher vibrational choice, you level up your life instantly. So how can you edit your life like a magazine ruthlessly so the things that you grab or the things that you do are always the highest next level version of yourself? This is part of self-love. It's about saying no to those choices that really don't serve you, that don't make you feel good. You feeling good and you feeling blissful, and you feeling in your highest energy. That's self-love. That's loving yourself. That's loving yourself enough to say no to the things that no longer serve you. Loving yourself enough to call yourself out on your own shit and saying, no, it's time for me to level up. Not take the easy way out, not do the comfortable thing, but do the thing that makes you feel the most good, the thing that's good for you, the thing that builds your confidence, the choice that moves you up to your next level. Now, it's a very interesting concept because you don't want to get into force, control, manipulation, or where things are always feeling hard. You want things to feel easy, to feel flowy, to feel good. That's why it's important to edit because if you can eliminate the choices from your life, it becomes easier to just make the healthier choice. So for me, for example, like bringing up my alcohol example, I just like have decided I'm not drinking for 100 days. So when I go to a restaurant, instead of saying, should I have a glass or shouldn't I have a glass? It's just an, an instant no for me because that's not even what I'm doing. So it's just not even on the board. It's not even a question. It's not hard at all. Like I... The decision's already been made. Like I was saying, let's say you go to your bra drawer or your underwear drawer and you're selecting what you're going to wear for the day. There was a long time ago where I learned about wearing black bras and underwear that they were not high vibe. Like in feng shui, it's really a protective energy. It's a very, it's a harsh energy. So wearing like colorful pieces and undergarments really support you in manifesting and leveling up and all these things. So I started removing black underwear and black bras, and they're just not even part of that wardrobe for me, right? Always having something fresh, clean, and new. I always spray my underwear drawer with like perfume. So every time I go in that aspect of my life to get ready, it makes me feel so good. The low vibe choices aren't even an option. And when you don't even have those low vibe options there and available, it's easy to make the higher vibe choice. So you have to start looking at your life, like what can I cut out? What can I ruthlessly edit and set the boundary for yourself? And one one exercise and activity that you can do is get out your journal and write out who you want to be. What are the things that feel good to you? What would you like your ideal day to look like? Like when you got up in the morning, what would you like that to look like? Here's what I did. I got out my journal one morning and I was like, I want to have like my coffee in the morning. I want to be able to journal in the morning. I want to read in the morning. I want to get up early. I want to move my body. 
I want to nourish my body. And I started writing down all the things that I needed to do during my day to make me really feel good. So I did things like green smoothies. You guys know it's almost been a year that I have been drinking a green smoothie almost every single day of my life. And it has fully helped me glow up. I never have to make a decision about what to have for breakfast, if I should eat or not eat. It's just, I always have a green smoothie. That's just like a non-negotiable for me. It's a standard I set for myself. It's ruthlessly cultivating my habits in my life, right? And becoming a boundary boss, like boundarying up for myself. So that's part of my life. My morning walks. Like I didn't want to do harsh, you know, workouts early in the morning. Like I used to do when I was younger, like spin classes or really like burn out my adrenals, burn out my day. No, I wanted like a slow meditative walk every single morning, getting my steps in, feeling really good. And that became a non-negotiable for me. So now the rest of my life moves around me going on a walk every single day. I can't always do it in the morning. Sometimes I do it in the evening. And I do a very meditational walk. So on my walk, I learned this on TikTok. They call it the hot girl walk. And on your walk, you just imagine yourself. It actually comes from Joe Dispenza's you know, manifestation practices. But on your walk, you envision the highest version of yourself. And you think of nothing else on the walk. So you can either play music that makes you feel like her, or you can go with a friend and you have only high vibrational talks, or you can turn on a meditation or some high frequency music, like whatever it is. And you go on that walk and you just get in your highest vibration. You get in your highest vibe. When you commit to doing that meditative walk, like every single day, you will change your life. And when that becomes a non-negotiable for you, you will elevate your life. As you begin to pile your life up with all of these standards and all of these boundaries and all of these things, these ruthless edits that you make to your life, these like non-negotiables, you will start to feel the sense of truly having confidence and loving yourself and knowing what it means to love yourself because it's showing up for those commitments that you make to yourself, keeping your word with yourself. When you build your word with yourself and you build your trust with yourself, you build your confidence in yourself. And as you build your confidence in in yourself, you start manifesting the things that you want. You start feeling like, ooh, I know I love myself. You start feeling worthy. You start feeling more proud of yourself. You feel good about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, you make others feel good about themselves and people feel great around you. And it just becomes this beautiful, like, essence and way of being that self-love becomes your standard it becomes who you are it becomes your like i'm saying it becomes your essence you don't self-love is sort of indescribable it's really difficult to like fully break it down that's probably why this series has come to like five episodes for me because it's sort of a set of actions it's a series of non-negotiables, a series of standards, a series of ways of being when you begin to embody what self-love truly is. And this is a big part of it, the edit part, you know, the boundary part, the non-negotiable part, the setting the standards for yourself. From this place, life feels very flowy. Life feels very sort of free. It feels sort of easy and calm and peaceful. It feels very, very good. This is the feminine frequency. It's that it's a course I have called the feminine frequency. It is a vibe. It is an essence and it is a way of being so full of self-love. You're just different. You just glow different. You manifest different. You're leaned back. You are attracting. You're not chasing. It's that whole vibe, right? So it feels really good. So I want you guys, especially as we move into this eclipse season, I want you guys to start looking at what can I let go of? What is no longer serving me? And if anything is getting eclipsed out of my life, I'm letting it go because that is my higher self moving me into my next level, into my next version. We don't fight the things that no longer serve us. We let them go. 
and I want you to feel calm about it. And as you have to let things go or things be removed from your life, get clear and get intentional on what you're filling your life up with. So that's where we can write down our habits and our points. Like, what am I going to start doing during my days that are going to make me feel more in love with my life, more in love with myself? What are my choices going to be? Who am I showing up as? Who am I being today? What kind of woman do I want to be in my magazine? There's this girl on TikTok and she has this um, sort of saying, she's like a coastal grandma is like her vibe. And it's kind of like the Nancy Myers movie vibe, you know, like Diane Keaton and she drinks white wine and she eats these foods and she decorates like this and she dresses like this. Like, who is your avatar? Like, who are you? What it, What would your magazine be like or look like? What is her essence? What is her vibe? And start cultivating her. What does she drink in the mornings? What does she do in the mornings? What does she do at night? What does her home look like? What does her life look like? What are her activities? What are her friendships? What does she do on the weekends? How does she show up? And start cultivating your magazine down to like what all the little habits and things that you do. What what do they look like? And then become ruthless about keeping it be only that. Like keeping it to that right? So for me, like I said, when I got rid of like all my black underwear and bra, I also got rid of all my black kitchen utensils. And I have a cooking utensil drawer that is so colorful. Like everything is, you know, pink or green or blue. You could start to edit things out and then fill it up with the things that are the new vision of the woman that you want to be and the woman that you want to create and the ideal version of yourself, like what makes you happiest. Like for you, it could be all black. There was a time in my life when I wanted everything black because it was so chic and so cool. And that was just that season. But I ruthlessly cultivated a space. I don't know if you guys remember my, my high rise apartment, Villa Noir. Everything was black. All the walls were black. The table, everything was black. It was so chic. I was madly obsessed with it. And everything in that home had to have black, right? And I was so ruthless about it. I edited it like a boundary boss. So self-love, your next step for self-love is becoming that editor, becoming the editor of your life and creating those boundaries for yourself. So I would love to see what boundaries you are setting, what things you are going to implement in your life, what changes you're going to make. Reach out to me. Send me a shout out on Instagram at Ashlina Caposta, or you can come hang out with me on TikTok at Ashlina's Notes. A five-star review of this episode would be the best and highest compliment. So if you love this episode, please feel free to do so. Please feel free to share it with a friend if you feel like this episode would be helpful for her too. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed it and you can come join the masterclass. The, I will put the link in the show notes inside of the Manifest Bliss monthly membership. I cannot wait to meet you and see you there. So have a beautiful rest of the day and until next time, stay blissful.